All right, here we go. Um, I'm thinking of just talking off the cuff. I'm not going to prepare anything for this particular um, episode. It might actually end up being a couple of episodes all at once. Um, and just what I was thinking of talking about was uh, the tendering process, because I've just come out of an all day workshop today where we were reviewing tenders for um, a major project. It was a project that I wrote the business case for and did the preliminary design for or managed the preliminary design process. And now it's been handed over to a project manager to um, to take it you know, through to delivery and commissioning and handover. So the um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is why we actually put projects out to tender and um, I mean the the first thing that springs to mind is that you do it because you want to achieve value for money um, and and the way the way you do that is by asking for a very specific scope and putting it out to market and by that I mean you you have a lot of documents that go in a tender package um, but the the most important one is the document that explains um, what the project actually is and what you want the uh, successful contractor to do for you and then you'll often give them schedules which are sets of tables that outline exactly what you want them to do for you. So for example, if you want them to supply a pump, you say what the flow of the pump needs to be, what the pressure needs to be. Um, you might say what material it needs to be made out of. You might define a, um, a make or a model. You might not. Sometimes you, you leave spaces for them to confirm based on the particular selection that they've made. And so you do that for all the different items of equipment that you want to compare the different offers based on. Another thing you'll ask them for is um, for information about the team that they're putting forward and the skills and capabilities, how they're going to organise the people that they have working on the project. Um, you might ask them for uh, how much time each of those people are going to dedicate to the project uh, so that you know that you know the money that you're spending, you're actually getting the um, the skills and experience um, and the the dedication that you want or that the project requires because some projects you don't really want people working on full time it might be fine for them to spend one day a week on it um, particularly if they're working well it depends on the person so like the project manager you might want their full time whereas the electrical person it might be fine to have them there one day a week if there's lots of other stuff going on um, so yeah, you want them to really think about the scope that you're asking for and what people they need to dedicate to the project in order to deliver that scope satisfactorily. Um, one of the other things you'll ask them for is a, um, a breakdown of their price and you can ask for a few different things. You know, you can say a lump sum where you kind of don't ask that many questions beyond that. You just say, look, this is what we want done, tell us how much it'll cost and then you agree to pay that amount regardless of how much time they spend on it. Um, or you might say, look, give us an estimate of how many hours it'll take and who you'll have working on the project and then build up a price based on that and it might end up being what you call an upper limited fee where if they then are able to do it for fewer hours or, or um, give some kind of innovation that saves time or money, um, that then becomes a lower price that you end up paying for the project and you can ask for different pain share gain share types of type of arrangements as well you can even ask them to suggest how um, how that pain share gain share type arrangement might work um, or they could suggest something else entirely it all depends on how you write the contract documents but really you want to be clear what you want and the aim for you is to get tenders back from the market so responses back from the market that answer all of your questions and answer them in a way that you can clearly compare each of the different offers um, and then it's up to you as a reviewer also to determine what you prioritize in your decision making process so some companies it's all about cost and they'll just choose the cheapest for others it's about risk 
um, and so they might pick the lowest risk option. Others might choose the one that provides the best overall quality. Um, and then others might do something like, um, like a, a cost rated with risk where you, you take the, um, the cost that the tenderers provide, but then you look at how risky is it for you to choose these tenderers compared to the other tenderers, and therefore how much extra money are you willing to spend to address those risks with them? Um, or another way of looking at it is you've got costs for each of your tenderers, but are you willing to choose a more expensive um, tender that addresses the risks more appropriately. So these are all the things that you're trying to tease out. So when you write your scope documents, you're trying to write them in a way that you'll get those answers and that you can make those decisions. Um, so yeah, the purpose of a tender document is one to see um, that you can uh, achieve a cost effective outcome. Um, another thing that you might be trying to achieve with a tender process is to really test the market and see whether there are innovations out there, either in terms of the design of a project or how it might be delivered, that you might be unaware of and you're hoping the market will come back and give you those good ideas that you can then adopt and um, you know see the benefit of in your project. Um, so they might have you know, smart construction methodologies. They might have good ways of managing their team or managing the pro project. They might have um, more stringent risk mitigation strategies than uh, your company has uh, seen previously. And so, you know, they provide security through their through their knowledge of systems. Um, yeah, so all, all sorts of good ideas that you're really canvassing from the market. Um, the other thing you might be looking to do is, um, you know, purely address a deficit in your company's capability. So it should be that, so it could be that uh, your company is perfectly capable of delivering the project that you're asking for. It's just that your people are already busy on other projects. And so the purpose of the tender is to choose someone that's got comparable capabilities and can, um, yeah, can can deliver the project so you're really more looking for resourcing than anything than any special knowledge or a particular cost efficient outcome although of course you always want to if you if you've got the choice between um paying more or paying less of course you're always going to choose less um if if all else is equal so those are the reasons why uh you might choose to tender um, the next episode will be about how a tender review meeting actually works. So thank you for subscribing to my channel and particularly hello to all of the new subscribers that have joined uh, since my last um, episode. It's, I'm really excited to see. I know the numbers at the moment are still really tiny, but yes, thank you. Every single one of you is appreciated. Um, if you're new and this is the first video you've seen, please subscribe and like. Um, if there's anything about engineering that you want to know, chuck it in the comments below and yeah, I'll try and uh, get around to making as many videos as I can to help answer any questions you might have. See you later.